judging by the color, not a lot of toast on the oak. You know, we, we're probably quite blonde here. You know, this is, this, these are planks that have spent some time thinking about themselves in the French forest. <laughs> Stop it. Well, our next guest um, is the nicest guy in wine. At least that's what he tells me. Um, his name is John Seckham. He is the Thorn in Thorn and Daughters. John, it's nice to have you. Uh, welcome to the Spittoon. Dan, it's great to be here. John, I wanted to start by asking you about your labels. Yes. They are diamond shaped. Can you tell us a little bit Correct. about them? Well, you know, we. In developing our label, you know, we thought a lot about this square and rectangular label paradigm. Yes. You know, and the thing about a rectangle, whichever way you turn it, it's still a rectangle. And a square is even worse. You know, you really can't do anything with that. And then, you know, I thought, but, you know, if we turn it halfway, we, we've created a lot of value there. You know, you've, you've created a whole new shape. Why has nobody uh, else done it? I think we did copy someone else, you know. I, th I think in all honesty, you know, the, the less I do in the winery and the less I do with brand development, the better. You know, I'm actually right. uh, a little bit clueless and uh, I can't take credit for that, really. So what you're saying is there's nothing new in the world? No, they're, 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 exactly. It's like fashion, you know, if you, if you give it 10 or 20 years, the same shit kind of rolls, rolls around mm. and, and it rolls around again. So, yeah, we're deeply unoriginal is, is basically what I'm, I'm trying to get at. Speaking about uh, fashion, uh, yeah. is that how you would explain your beard? Yeah, no, I think uh, the, the beard thing came about because uh, obviously pre-COVID, um, we do a whole shave off at the beginning of harvest. Yes. Uh, and we all grow our beards to the end of harvest and then we have a kind of pageant, a winemaker's pageant slash talent show in Bot River. Uh, so Niels Verberg and I, you know, we obviously got to the COVID pandemic landing and we weren't able to put on the show. So I said, I'm going to push through and continue to grow the beard until we're able to hold the show. Uh, I think my resolve is, is, is failing a little bit. Um, I said to Butch, I ate a, a, like a triple king steer in series the other day and I, I, I needed to have a shower. I had to go and get a wad of napkins to clean myself up. It's, it's just getting disgusting. <laughs> John, last time I saw you, we were sitting over there. We are homeless. We are homeless. And we were tasting through your wines. Yes. Okay. Every time there's a new vintage release, you have to sit down and talk a whole lot of wine trade people through the wines that you've just produced. I'm, I'm curious, do you enjoy that or is it a bit of a pain in the ass? Yeah, I think what, what happens is, you know, you, you get the sound biting, which is very repetitive, 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 yeah, and, you know, but the nice thing about it is if you've done it as long as I have, it just becomes completely automatic, and I, I can literally disengage a large amount of my brain and just let my mouth run, you know, so, you know, we generally in the wine trade, we talk a lot of crap, so, you know, I think once you get it dialed in on the mouth, you know, the brain can go somewhere else completely. The problem is that people like myself who hang on to every word that you're saying, is, are you trying to tell me that that's all absolute nonsense? I, I, exactly. You know, like I said, we, we're deeply unoriginal. Um, we tend to just recycle the same materials all the time. Um, you know, and I, I prefer direct plagiarisms. You know, it, it kind of keeps things in the right headspace. It all, it all sounds very professional, but... You know, I think if you scratch below the surface, you'll see it's just a pile of crap, basically. Now, you talk about this unoriginality and, uh, and the rest of it. I, I wanted to ask you, a few months back, you did a tasting for incurably pretentious people. Yeah. It went viral all over the socials. Um, and I was wondering if you would be prepared to do one of those for us. I, I like that because I, I think that's definitely a series, like you said, has a lot of appeal because I think there are a lot of incredibly pretentious people in wine and yeah I would I'd love to give it a go but I believe today you, you th you're throwing me something blind so you kind of think like I don't know like I'm a performing monkey but, um, <laughs> we can give it a go well monkey if you wouldn't mind performing for me <laughs> there is a glass in front of you 
I'm not yes. telling you what it is, um, but if you would uh, kindly do a tasting for incurably pretentious people for us. Oh, welcome to another in our series of wine tastings for incurably pretentious people. So, I think we'll start off by stating the obvious that this is a, a white wine. You know, with some slight gold to yellow hints. You know, we're definitely not on the green here. We've kind of lost the green of youth. So I would be expecting something um, relatively well aged. Probably seen a little bit of time in, in some oak, certainly. You know, and judging by the color, not a lot of toast on the oak. You know, we, we're probably quite blonde here. You know, this is, this, these are planks that have spent some time thinking about themselves in the French forest. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> <laughs> You know, these are, these are planks sat out in the elements in France, somewhere in a French forest. They've really come to terms with themselves, and you can, you, 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 you can see how well integrated the, the planks are in the color of the wine. You know? And this, this, for me, you know, this, this, this is something that you know, we, need to, we need to surmount before we continue. So, yes, we're there. We'll go to aromatics, you know, I find, I find fruit dreadfully boring. It's, it's basically for, it's for birds and, <laughs> and other animals, you know. Um, but I think, having noticed this earlier, you know, this is, this is mineral and straight. This is, you know, this is very, it's very honest stuff, you know. There's maybe a little whiff of testosterone or something here, but I might be mistaken about that, you know, I think maybe it's hard to tell. It's a delicate wine. It could be a man's wine or, you know, it, it could be a woman's wine as well. Mm, little, little hint of graphite. So sort of struck rocks. Hmm. Yeah. And we can't even talk about laser-like acidity here. This is, this is a particle accelerator. This, you know, this hits the back of the palate like starlight. This is, um, ah, this is wild stuff, you know. Now, this is definitely a, you know, this is definitely a northern climate wine. This is, you know, the new world pretends that we can get these kind of acidities, but we really can't. You know, we can, we can, we can bring a lot of fruit and, you know, basic pleasure, but this is, you know, this is something, this is something riveting oh, and length for days. A little bit of dirtiness, maybe that's what I thought, testosterone. A little bit of dirtiness there, but in a very positive way. Savory, very delightful stuff. Love it. <laughs> well, would you like to know what your dirty wine is then, John Second? <laughs> I would. Actually, before, can you give us an idea what you think it might be? Well, I'm hoping you're going to treat me on a Monday morning because I drove all the way out from uh, Minas to come and talk to you. So I hope it's something decent. I suspect it's something decent. Does it taste like something decent? It does. Mm. It really does. Pushes a lot of buttons. Okay. I would say we're probably in Burgundy here. At very least Chardonnay, very high quality. Well, uh, everyone at home, turns out John Second knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Oof. John is drinking that a... Is worth getting out of bed for. The 2018 <laughs> Le Fleuve Poulini Monrochet. Very, very good way to start the week and the day. John, as a, a thank you for appearing on the show, um, I'm expecting a gift. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I was uh, hoping you might be able to sort me out with a little something something. Yeah, well, you know, Butch and I, we were on the way over, we were, we were saying, you know, you, you've, you've done extremely well in, in the wine business. You know, you've, you've produced some extremely funny content. But, you know, we thought you may be getting a little bit ahead of yourself, you know. Right. So we need to rein you back in, um, right. get you back to basics. And this is a humble wine, but this is where my, my life in wine started. Uh, some friends and I, we... We escaped home and we went to an AHA concert. Standard Bank Arena in Joburg and 
we found a Shabin, and this is one of my, my formative wine experiences. So, you know, I think you could really benefit um, to, you know, to go back to basics and, and, and school thyself. Well, wow. um, my gift from <laughs> the Thorn and Thorn and Daughters is a bottle of Sedgwick's Old Brown Sherry. Uh, look, I'm, I'm really impressed, actually. I haven't had one of those in, in a long time. Um, I'm also impressed that you went to see AHA at uh, the Standard Bank Arena. Uh, you're really showing your age there, John. <laughs> um, so this is going to go straight into the spittoon. I feel like this one will not be subscribed to, but in it goes. Don't knock it, James. Like I said, back to basics. I won't knock it. So for those of you at home who don't know Thorn and Daughters, uh, John Seckham, um, the man on my left, is an absolute gent. Um, he makes wine with some wonderful people uh, down in Gabrielskloof. The wines are truly magnificent. Um, for me, Rocking Horse is not just on its way to, but already a South African classic in terms of white blends. And I do suggest you seek them out, not just the rocking horse. They're all fantastic. They're also really um, incredible value. You know, you guys invited us here, you know, on the, the pretext of us receiving T-shirts. Um, you know, I think the burgundy goes a long way to sort of mitigating the disappointment. But yeah. I, I thought, you know, um, in good faith, I'll, I'll also gift you with, um, with a T-shirt. Um, Goodness gracious. Uh, My very so own Thorn and Daughters like t-shirt. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, John. You have to be very special. To get I assume this is a medium, because I don't yes. need any bigger than that. <laughs> well, John, listen, thank you very much for the Sedgwick's Old Brown Sherry. It's a pleasure. Um, delighted. I'm definitely going to hang yeah, on to this. Please take that with you. I'm uh, going to hang on to this. because I'll be very annoyed if I come back to the bar and it's still here. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take something of value away from this. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, it's been an absolute joy having John Seckham on our show today. Uh, as I said, Thorn and Daughters wines, you need to seek them out. They are magnificent, uh, a wonderful expression, typically of cool climates and just really, really brilliant, focused, pure, magnificent wines. Keep an eye out for them. Uh, John, thanks again for appearing on our awesome show. Awesome, man. Cheers, Dan. Cheers. <laughs>